welcome to the first ever episode of The Blind Angler. My name's Wayne and I'm based on the south coast of Devon down in the West Country. Um, as the title suggests, I am actually registered blind, which is where I've got my trusted friend with me at all times. Uh, I've got around about 5 to 10% of my eyesight left and I've got an eye condition called retinitis pigmentosus or shortened down RP. Now, we've come to do some sea fishing for bass um, on the south coast of Cornwall and the uh, beach we're fishing on is uh, Seaton Beach. Now we've already had to cast out to catch the best time of the tide and the, uh, and, the and the light going as well quite quickly. Um, at the moment we're coming to the end of the season now, it's middle of, uh, middle of September nearly and the um, baits that we're using at the moment is, uh, is lugworm although we do have sand deal and we're both on, um, we're using putty penna rigs. Uh, which I'll go through the, uh, the rigs with you in a little bit later once we uh, wind in and see how we get on. But, uh... Okay, so a um, little talk about the taco and the bait and, and so on at the moment. Um, first off, what I like to do is this, uh, this here is my shock leader um, that runs onto my reel and, and connects to the, the, the main line. And what I like to do is attach two beads to it before I attach the swivel that that, can, that uh, is part of the rig. Um, the reason I do this is purely because of my eyesight. When I'm winding in, I can't always see when my rig is getting close to my top eye. And um, I don't want this here knocking out my top, my top eye or, or damaging the equipment at all. So I put two beads there as a bit of a stopper. Um, as soon as I hit, feel that touch, then I can stop winding and I know where I am. So that's why I do that. The rig itself is... Uh, is a pulley rig. Uh, it's a very popular rig uh, with sea anglers and um, the way it works is we've got the, the impact grip lead here and uh, the hooks, what they do is a hook just under here when, the, when, you, when you've got the bait on and then when you cast out the water goes into these little divots, it's a bit covered in sand, into these little divots pushing this up which will then release the hooks from this. It's absolutely brilliant. Brilliant these are. Very, very popular. And what it does is it helps keep keep everything all nice and neat and streamlined. So if you imagine the baits on there, that's all streamlined. Very good for, for improving your casting. Um, you could add anything from 5 to 15 yards on your cast. So that's really good. The way it works is you cast out, as I said, the water hits that, your bait's released. Uh, so the bait's over here, and that's how it's, and it's, it's, it's similar to that as it's fishing. When you get a fish, and you strike and you wind it in, the weight of the fish will compensate for the weight of, of the actual weight itself, which will bring the weight up nice and high, out of any, uh, out of any snags, weed, rocks, anything like that could, that could maybe catch it. And, um, and you, seem to say, you, you do save a lot more tackle um, with, with this rig, it's absolutely brilliant. So that's the pulley side of things. The penno is a two, a two hook trace. Uh, one's tied on, the other one's running free. And uh, what you do is you wrap, when you, when, once you've baited up and you've got the bait right up the snoo here, you then wrap it around uh, two, three times to lock it in place. And it does improve the catch rate. When you're fishing, winter fishing for whiting, um, you know, you can get, or even codlin as well, you can get like two fish. On, on each of on one of these hooks at the same time as you bring in two fish when you when you think you've got a good monster fish you end up with two uh, medium sized fish so that's the rig uh, the bait we're using today we've got a mixture uh, we've got the good old lugworm or blowworm as some people call it and we've also got sand eel now uh, the chap Mike that I'm fishing with at the moment, he's out already um, with the worm on, so I'm going to have a crack with the sand eel and see see how they go. And I'll just show you how I uh, how I like to bait up a sand eel. So a good pair of scissors, and uh, what I do is I just chop off the head and also the tail. And I like to do it at an angle. Um, I find 
it just seems to let more more juices out. Okay. So let's get the, uh, the hooks. And what I do now is I kind of measure it a bit. So the hook, if I thread it in, it's going to come out about here. So just thread it on like a worm. Try not to pierce it. Slippery little thing, this one. And I'll just thread it on just a tad. Bend it around slightly, just nip the butt. Which I find helps lock it onto the hook. Like so. And then get the second hook, which is running away from me. There we go. Slide it right down the uh, down the main line. Uh, sorry, down the, uh, the hook trace here. This by the way, this 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 line here is um, is 20 pounds in Sam Nijo and it's very thin but extremely strong and I love this stuff, really do. So what I do is I wind that around one, two, three, and then just nip it in the sand eel. Like so, just make sure your hook, your hook points are showing, and that locks it in. Now I could cast that out straight away, but what I'm going to do is use some bait and elastic. I don't need too much of this. Absolutely brilliant and stuff. If you haven't got it, I suggest uh, I suggest you get some. This is it, it, it's, it's really cheap as well, and it lasts for absolute ages. So uh, just buying that one on just keeps it on. I mean, where we are at the moment, we shouldn't really be affected by the crab. I'm just trying to keep this hook point clear. Don't want to mass the hook point with the bait or with the with the bait and elastic. It's a bit hard. Here we go. The fish is very sticky and uh, with the sand as well. Get this bait and elastic all stuck to me instead of the bait. tight turns and then let it go and that really let it lock it into place. Brilliant. So the beach that we're fishing is Seaton Beach down on the south coast of Cornwall. Um, there's, you can catch a variety of species here as I might have said. Um, bass, small eyed ray and uh, and whiting as well. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to cast this one out. The tide it's a big tide tonight. It's uh, and um, I think it's about a six 6.1, something like that, so um, we're going to get this one cast out. The tide is now ebbing, uh, so it's going out, and uh, cast this one out and uh, we'll see how we get on. Hopefully touch back with you shortly. Okay, so we uh, thought we'd touch back, let you know what's going on. Um, as of yet, we haven't had any fish, and uh, the tide is um, coming close to, to low tide now. So. Um, we really did think we were going to get something on the ebb as the tide started backing, um, but uh, I don't know if it's because it's a full moon tonight. It might make a difference, but uh, we're hope hopeful when, when it hits low tide and then uh, starts to turn again, um, we might pick up a couple of fish on the way back up. We've been mixing the baits up with the uh, lugworm and the sand eel, and uh, both got a sand eel on there at the moment because uh, we did have a good bite. And, and, and unfortunately missed it, uh, and that was on eel, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But um, one thing I would all, I would say that is if you're looking to get into fishing and um, you're not too sure where to begin, tackle shops, uh, the guys in tackle shops are really helpful. Um, there's forums online that you can you can also go on to and, and find out what you need and so on, and obviously there's YouTube as well with a lot of, a lot of information. Um, all I would say is, uh, if you are thinking of going, 
make sure safety is key. So let, let people know where you're going, when you expect to be back, uh, have good footwear, and uh, if you're going at night, take a good head torch. Um, I do have a head torch, but we are using it at the moment to, uh, to film. Um, and also a mobile phone as well, um, just so if you do need to ring anybody, if you do get stuck, it's key, it really is. But, um, And um, also, if you can get yourself a rod tip light as well, it makes a lot of difference. It, it does. It's, it saves battery on your on your head torch, um, and uh, it's, e it's easy to pick out. So hopefully, we'll touch back with you soon, and uh, we'll have a fish or or two. Okay, so we've got the first fish of the night. As you can see, it's an eel. Um, or better known as uh, stickies, they are extremely slimy, making a right mess of my hands there. Um, getting quite a good little bite actually, this one. Um, but what I would say is, whenever you go fishing, it's always handy to take a rag with you, um, just to keep your hands clean, because there's a good chance of catching, picking up eels pretty much anywhere. Um, but he's the first fish on the blind angler and the first fish of the night so uh, I'm actually quite happy with that <laughs> but uh, let's, let's get him back in hopefully uh, we'll get another one soon for what we're actually going for <laughs> cheers okay so uh, we've just baited back up now and, uh, and cast back out um, it's crazy really I, I haven't been to this beach this year fishing um, and since the, the winter of 2013 coming into 2014 with the storms it, it's weird how it's changed because it's always been a steep beach but it seems even steeper and um, it's, it's, it's a really nice sandy beach but as you get further down now um, it's, it's, it's all broken up rock and uh, where is it where it come from I haven't got a clue but it, it's, it's proper mangled out there now and um, yeah it's, it's incredible what those storms have what those storms have done but uh, it seems like there's uh, been some good fish caught down here. I don't know if, if that's like stirred the bottom up and, uh, and brought in a bit more uh, food for the fish. But um, yes, it's incredible. It really is. The um, just a quick chat about the uh, the equipment that we're using. Um, first off. We're uh, 13 foot beach casters um, if you are looking at getting into sport there's a variety of them out there and um, it kind of goes what you, what you pay for is kind of what you get the higher you spend the, the better quality normally and the stronger the rod um, and, the, uh, and same with the reels as well but um, yeah so I'm using a 13 foot beach caster uh, with a multiplier reel um, the line on the multiplier is 15 pounds with a 60 pound shock leader. Um, the reason for the shock leader is, is, is basically the, the strength in the power, because you're doing a power cast, and you've got like four, five, six ounces of, of, of lead on the bottom, you need the shock leader to be able to absorb it and get it out there. Uh, you don't want any snaps, especially on a beach where there could be people out uh, kayaking, swimming, uh, other fishermen, you don't want to snap off halfway through a cast and your, your lead end up going right down the beach and, um, and doing some serious damage to someone. Um, the way the shock leader works is they say it's, it's, it's 10 pounds of shock leader for every ounce of weight that you use. So if you're using 4, uh, four ounce lead, you really want a, a 40 pound shock leader. Uh, same with 5 ounce, 50 pound and so on. Um, the reason I've got a 60 pound shock leader um, is purely because uh, it's a tapered one in which it, it's quite thin. And, um, and I was able to pick it up quite cheap from, from, a, from a local dealer, which was, which was quite good. Um, the impact lead, the, the lead that I'm using is only five ounce, but uh, it's, it's good to have a shock dealer for sure, absolutely. Um, also head torches as well. The head torch that I've got here is, uh, is an LED. Um, 
absolutely brilliant, good, good bright light, and uh, and good on the batteries as well. Um, if you are going to get a headlight, you really do want an LED. Um, blue or red are usually the best colours. Doesn't seem to spook the fish so much. Um, you know, you see some anglers fishing with a big old headlight and they look out to sea and a big beam goes across and it's, it's, it's unnatural and it spooks the fish. Um, the moon, you know, they, they see that every two weeks and they're used to that, it's natural for them. But uh, LED, blue and red, they don't seem to, doesn't seem to spook the fish. Um, so I would always say get yourself an LED. Again, what you spend on a head torch is, is the quality that you're, you're going to be getting back. So um, another tip, if you're beach fishing, um, is a seat box. Um, get these pretty much anywhere, online, any, any dealer. The reason being is, if you're fishing like we are now on a sandy beach, the tide's going out, we move down with the tide, in, and you're here for the long haul, you don't want to be like hanging around standing all the time or, or sitting on wet sand. So it's always good to have one of these, and it's a good way to keep in your, um, your tackle nice and dry as well, especially on surf beaches, where, in fairness, on a surf beach, the surf could be right out there, but the, the tide would still come right up here because they're flat. So this just keeps everything all nice and dry and secure. Um, you can get little shells from a little backrest and so on. Um, it's just a case of just having a look at and see what, what, you, what you prefer. And also a tripod goes without saying, um, you know, in, in the winter or if you're doing a long haul of fishing, you don't want to be holding your rod all the time. Um, you can get, the, the rods are really light and you can have sessions where you're stood in the, in the surf and uh, just holding onto your rod, you know, and it's a nice way of fishing for the bass in the summer months. You, you can stand in the corner, it's nice and warm. But when it comes to the winter, yeah, you want, you, you want to try and keep your hands nice and warm and uh, not going on to freezing cold rod. But uh, there's a few tips there that hopefully will, uh, will help you. But um, But yeah, like I said before, local knowledge is, is key. Get as much no, local knowledge as you can, especially if you're going to uh, unfamiliar marks. Fishermen don't like to give away their special marks, but if you're going to a place like a surf beach that's well known, or, or rocks, especially rocks as well, keep an eye, try and get as much information as you can, but fishing from rocks, keep an eye on the swell, because there, there has been a couple of times where I've been fishing on the rocks, and um, you know, you, you fish happily for an hour or so, Next thing you know, you get a massive, great big swell come in that, uh, that can quite easily take you in, in the drink. So, um, but yeah, safety is definitely key. I've been, I've been very fortunate with my eyesight condition. I do find it difficult, um, and I've, but I've always got good friends and family to go fishing with that, that help me and, and support me with it. And fishing really is for, for anyone. And um, definitely get out there, get out there. So. Uh, touch back with you shortly hopefully with uh, another fish hopefully <laughs> but uh, I think it's time to, uh, to have a drink and uh, sit back and relax so uh, okay so uh, we've packed up now um, it's about one o'clock in the morning we've been here since about half past six seven o'clock and uh, we've given it a good old go um, we mixed it up with the baits and the methods and so on that we were trying um, but the fish just didn't seem to be here today. Um, don't know if it's because it's a big, bright faux moon, um, or the tide. I mean, the tide went out such a long way, and I don't know if it's just because it was just too shallow. But then we should have still been able to pick up a bass. So it's, it's a bit of a weird one today. Um, managed to get one eel, but uh, hopefully we'll have better luck, better luck next time. Um, but. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We're gonna, I'm gonna have a chat to a couple of friends, see how the fishing's going in and around different areas, and see if we can pick up a fish somewhere else later on uh, within the next couple of weeks, depending on the tides and the weather and so on. But um, today's video was was all about showing you that fishing is, is really for anyone, or you know, if you've got any uh, kind of disabilities or any problems uh, for that matter, you know, get out there and you know not just fishing any any sports for that matter you can get out and have a, have a good time and, uh, and enjoy yourself um, and there's a lot of information a lot of information online
but I've had fun making this video. Um, hopefully you've, you may have learned or picked up a few tips here and there. And um, sorry that we didn't get the, the uh, species we were after, but uh, you know it's coming to the end of the summer season now, where the old summer species are moving off and the winter species are coming in. So next time we go out, we could again target some some bass, uh, but there's also a chance of uh, whiting, early codling, and, and and so on. So that's probably what we're going to aim for on on our next trip out. So uh, hopefully see you see you again. So uh, good luck with the fishing. Take care.